visitarnos de esta gran nación norteamericana, lo único que quiero decir es lo siguiente. Bueno, eh, a pesar de que no soy norteamericano, ustedes los norteamericanos deben de sentirse tan satisfechos de que Estados Unidos haya recuperado su liderazgo con un gran líder como es el presidente Ronald Reagan. And I think that everybody recognizes that this vote in the Congress of the United States uh, in, uh, in which they rejected the request of President Reagan for uh, uh, humanitarian assistance for the Contras was a victory for President Daniel Ortega and for the uh, Communist Party. And uh, I think that uh, it's not my business what the Congress of the United States decides. They, uh, the thing was lost by two votes and this is, uh, I, I can't interfere in domestic American politics. But uh, although I'm not an American, I think that uh, you should feel proud in the United States that the United States has recovered its leadership position in the world under a great leader named Ronald Reagan. Nosotros estamos luchando en Centroamérica para que existan regímenes esencialmente democráticos surgidos de la verdadera voluntad eh, de los pueblos. ¿verdad? Nosotros estamos luchando porque se preserve la libertad, la justicia y estamos apoyando al grupo de contadoras que está todavía reuniéndose en verdad los cinco países de Centroamérica y quien más obstáculos pone precisamente el régimen de Nicaragua para llegar a soluciones pacíficas eh, en un contexto global y regional en Centroamérica. And so we in Central America are fighting to, uh, for the establishment of democratic regimes that represent uh, the will of the people freely expressed. We're fighting for liberty, we're fighting for justice. Uh, we strongly support the Contador process. Their meetings continue. Of the five Central American countries that participate in that process, the one that faces the most obstacles in the path of a peaceful solution within a global framework for the entire region is precisely the regime in Nicaragua. Algunos periodistas que han llegado allá a Honduras, yo les he dicho que vayan a Cuba o que vayan a Afganistán, que vayan a Moscú a hablar como pueden hablar en Estados Unidos y como pueden hablar en Honduras. Nosotros somos demócratas y me gustaría que los periodistas fueran a esos países dominados por el comunismo a ver qué les puede pasar, o la cárcel o a saber qué otra cosa. I've told the uh, journalists that have visit Honduras that, uh, that they should try going to Cuba, Afghanistan, or Moscow and speak as freely as they do in the United States and in Honduras and see what would happen under these communist governments. They wind up in jail or who knows what. Lights, please. Sir. President Reagan, are you encouraged by what you heard from your GOP leadership today about the chances for the Encouraged what I've just been hearing here. <laughs> Le preguntaron si está alentado porque le dijeron que no es libre, soberana e independiente. Lo que yo he expresado es el concepto que siempre he tenido del presidente Reagan, que ha rescatado el liderazgo que lo estaba perdiendo Estados Unidos. La fe y la confianza que en los que creemos en la democracia ha renacido. Es un hombre vigoroso en sus decisiones y yo exijo al pueblo norteamericano para que medite para que ore a Dios nuestro Señor que los ilumine cuando tomen determinaciones. A mí nadie me ha influido para que yo exprese estos conceptos y he venido aquí cumpliendo una gentil invitación del presidente Ronald Reagan. I'd well, like to say, remind you that the shield of Honduras says uh, free, sovereign and independent. What I've said represents my beliefs. Uh, I believe that President Reagan has recovered uh, the position of leadership that the United States has been losing. And I have, all of us who believe in democracy have regained our faith and our trust in this leadership. Our faith and trust have been reborn. I think he's a man who makes vigorous decisions, and I think the American people should think about this and pray to Lord God Almighty that he uh, illuminate the president in the decisions that he, uh, that he makes. But I have not been coached. I haven't been put up for this. <laughs> I came here as a, uh, accepting a very kind invitation issued to me by President Reagan. In the second place, President Reagan no tiene ni vocación de verdugo, ni mucho menos de dictador, porque él es un demócrata y jamás ha impuesto normas a un país libre, soberano e independiente como el pueblo. And furthermore, President Reagan is not an executioner, he is not a dictator by any manner or means, and he's always been a strong believer in democracy, and he never has imposed any kind of restrictions on a free, sovereign, and independent country like Honduras.
Admirador también del presidente Reagan. Admirador del presidente Reagan también. Yeah, the president of Cordoba. And the president of Cordoba. Hello, my dear. Hello. How are you? What a wonderful time he gave us. That's all tasks. That's all tasks. Yo le digo al embajador de Negro Pontes, de Light City World, La Paz. La ciudad luz. Oh, the light city of the world, La Paz. La Paz. Es que he querido medio aprender inglés. Meet your, your people also. Ambassador, of course. Ambassador, of course. Ambassador, of course. Ambassador, of course.
Thanks. I'll go first here. It's been a privilege to have President Suazo of the Honduras, a friend of the United States and a friend of democracy, here for a visit. We've had very useful discussions, during which both of us expressed our satisfaction with the positive relationship that our two countries enjoy. We're in full agreement that the growth of democracy and economic opportunity is essential to peace and security in Central America. We reviewed the accomplishments of the U.S.-Honduran Joint Commission established last year to promote the closest possible cooperation between our two governments. The Joint Commission is an excellent example of how friends can work together in a framework of mutual respect and cooperation. I express to President Suazo my personal appreciation for his government's strong support for our policies in Central America. Our two governments share serious concern over the threat to the entire region posed by the communist Sandinista regime in Nicaragua and its Cuban and Soviet supporters. President Suazo and I renewed our commitment to face this challenge together into counter-aggression and subversion. I also express today my continued support for peace efforts through the Contadora process. Honduras and the United States both back a comprehensive solution based on full, verifiable implementation of the Contadora document of objectives, including dialogue to achieve national reconciliation through democratic elections. President Suazo and I are today issuing a joint statement that sums up the state of relations between our two countries. In it, the American commitment to the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Honduras is restated in clear and firm terms. Honduras is a friendly nation facing a serious threat of communist aggression and subversion. There should be no doubt that we will fulfill our mutual defense obligation under the Rio Treaty and the OAS Charter. Finally, it was a great personal pleasure to meet again with President Suazo. Honduras is on the path to democracy, a course which will, in the long run, ensure its people the fruits of freedom and prosperity. I and the people of the United States look forward to continued close friendship and cooperation with President Suazo and the people of Honduras. Señor Presidente, este es el cuarto encuentro que con usted y yo hemos sostenido desde que asumí la primera magistratura de mi país por la voluntad libremente expresada del pueblo hondureño. Mi visita se produce a escasos seis meses de las próximas elecciones generales en Honduras. Por primera vez en 50 años, un civil tendrá el señalado privilegio de entregar el poder a otro civil electo en comicios libres y honestos. Nuestra naciente democracia se ha visto sometida a la peor crisis económica de este siglo y a las mayores amenazas internacionales. Estas circunstancias han hecho la tarea más difícil. No todo lo que deseaba hacer ha sido posible. Sin embargo, Dejaré a mi legítimo sucesor una nación en el pleno goce de su libertad, presta a asumir el reto del futuro, con fe en su capacidad de progreso y con arraigada convicción de justicia. Honduras, que ha sabido honrar la amistad y la solidaridad democrática, necesita a la vez de sus amigos. Precisa de inequívocas muestras de apoyo para continuar desarrollándose en paz, con seguridad, con equidad y libertad. Mi visita a este hermoso país marca el inicio de un nuevo relacionamiento entre Honduras y los Estados Unidos, una nueva relación fundada en el respeto mutuo y en la cooperación con interdependencia, una nueva relación que tiene cuenta de nuestras diferencias y de nuestros intereses comunes, de nuestras necesidades y de nuestras potencialidades. 
Como resultado de las negociaciones que altos representantes de nuestros dos países han venido conduciendo en los últimos seis meses, el día de hoy, el presidente Reagan y yo hemos comprometido, nos, en un, nos hemos comprometido en una amistad más sólida y en una cooperación más estrecha sobre la base de respeto mutuo a nuestra propia dignidad. Así hemos reiterado los principios generales de una nueva relación tanto en materia económica como de seguridad. Hemos decidido darle permanencia a las comisiones de alto nivel que se han venido reuniendo para tratar estos temas, así como las consultas sistemáticas entre el Secretario de Estado y el Canciller de Honduras. El Presidente Reagan ha comprendido con gran sensibilidad la urgencia de cooperar con el pueblo hondureño para estabilizar y reactivar nuestra economía. Hemos llegado a un acuerdo mutuamente satisfactorio para el desembolso de la asistencia programada para este año y se han iniciado ya conversaciones para proyectar la cooperación económica y técnica para los próximos años. El diálogo entablado podrá permitirnos prestarle la atención adecuada a los esfuerzos renovados que habrá que emprender para acelerar un proceso de reformas económicas, sociales y administrativas, de cuyo éxito dependerá en gran medida el afianzamiento y desenvolvimiento de la democracia hondureña. Si bien la justicia social, el desarrollo sostenido de nuestra economía y la participación política deben ser las bases de nuestra seguridad nacional, el presidente Reagan y yo hemos evaluado los peligros internacionales que se cierren sobre Honduras, la región centroamericana y los propios Estados Unidos de Norteamérica. Nuestros países no faltarán a su deber de prestarse asistencia para hacerle frente a esas amenazas. En el caso de Honduras, hemos recibido garantías de seguridad de parte de los Estados Unidos. Honduras no tiene intenciones agresivas contra ningún país. En la crisis que vive Centroamérica, no seguiremos esforzando por lograr un arreglo negociado dentro de la iniciativa del Grupo de Contadora. Aspiramos a un acuerdo regional de paz y cooperación plenamente verificable sobre los 21 objetivos definidos por los cinco estados centroamericanos. Señor Presidente, nuestras conversaciones han probado ser sumamente útiles para impulsar los excelentes vínculos de amistad y de cooperación entre nuestros pueblos y gobiernos, así como para la paz y la seguridad de la región centroamericana. Retornaré a Honduras habiendo reafirmado mi admiración por el pueblo americano, mi fe en la actitud comprensiva de sus legisladores y mi confianza en, en que el liderazgo que indudablemente usted ejerce estará permanente al servicio de los más puros ideales que hicieron a esta nación grande y que compartieron nuestros próceres en su temprana búsqueda por la independencia, la democracia y la libertad. Muchas gracias. Mr. President, this is the fourth meeting between us since I became president of my country as a result of the freely expressed will of the Honduran people. This visit takes place a scant six months prior to general elections in Honduras, and for the first time in 50 years, a civilian will have the great privilege of handing over the reins of government to another civilian elected in free and honest elections. Our emerging democracy has been subjected to the worst economic crisis of this century and exposed to the most severe international threats. These circumstances have made our task more difficult. Not everything I would have liked to have done has been possible. However, I will hand over to my legitimate successor, a nation enjoying complete freedom, ready to face the challenges of the future with faith in its capacity for progress and with a deep-rooted conviction of justice. Honduras, which has honored friendship and solidarity with other democracies, also needs its friends. It requires a clear expression of support in order to continue its development in peace, security, and with justice and liberty for all. My visit to this beautiful country underlines the beginning of a new relationship between Honduras and the United States, a new relationship which is based on mutual respect and cooperation with interdependency a new relationship which takes into account our differences and our common interests, our needs and our potential. As a result of high-level negotiations between our countries over the past six months, President Reagan and I have today committed ourselves to a more solid friendship and to closer cooperation based on mutual respect of our own dignity. 
Thus, we have reaffirmed the general principles of a new relationship in economic as well as security matters. We have decided to continue to maintain on a permanent basis the high-level commissions which have been meeting to deal with ma these matters and to have systematic consultations between the Secretary of State and the Foreign Minister of Honduras. President Reagan, with great sensitivity, has understand the urgent need to cooperate with the Honduran people in order to stabilize and reactivate our economy. We have reached a mutually satisfactory agreement for the disbursement of aid program for this year, and talks have been initiated to project economic and technical cooperation over the coming years. This dialogue will allow us to give proper attention to the renewed efforts which will have to be made in order to speed up a process of economic, social, and administrative reform. The success of democracy in Honduras will depend on carrying out these efforts. Even though social justice, the sustained development of our economy, and political participation should be the basis of our national security, President Reagan and I have evaluated the international dangers faced by Honduras, the Central American region, and the United States itself. Our countries will not fail to provide assistance to each other in order to face these threats. In the case of Honduras, we have received security guarantees from the United States. Honduras does not have aggressive designs on any country. In the crisis faced by Central America, we shall continue our efforts to reach a negotiated agreement within the Contadora Peace Initiative. We look forward to a fully verifiable regional peace and cooperation agreement based on the 21 objectives set forth by the five Central American states. Mr. President, our talks have proven to be very helpful in promoting excellent links of friendship and cooperation between our peoples and governments, as well as for the peace and security of the Central American region. I shall return to Honduras, having reaffirmed my admiration for the American people, my faith in the understanding of its legislatures, legislators, and my confidence that the leadership which you undoubtedly exert will always be present to serve the ideals that make this nation great, ideals which were shared by the founding fathers of our respective nations when they were searching for independence democracy and liberty. Thank you very much. I'm not going to give any details. You like this? 